Good morning dear children how are you i hope all of you are fine today we will start our second book moments the book moments comprises 10 short stories this book has been prescribed as a supplementary reader today we will start chapter first the lost child this is a story of a little boy who like any other child wants to buy everything he sees in village fair through the story the writer has tried to tell us that a child's most precious treasure are his parents this realization comes to him only after he loses them in the fair in this chapter the author deals with the child's psychology in a sensitive way without shying away from its reality the writer of this story is mulkraj anand who was born in peshawar in december 1905 he died in september 2004 mulkraj anand was one of the first indian writers in english language anand is admired for his novels and short stories which have acquired the status of being classic works of modern indian english literature noted for their perceptive insight into the lives of the oppressed their impoverishment exploitation and misfortune he was also a recipient of the civilian honor of the padma bhushan before starting chapter i am telling you the characters of this story the first and most character of this story is the lost child a child or a little boy goes to a fair with his parents he is very happy and excited to see colorful and various types of toys and sweets he wants to buy everything and stops at every shop in the fair however his parents who are poor villagers naturally cannot afford to buy all the things and refuse to buy them in this process the little boy gets lost and finds himself alone he is puzzled panic stricken and starts crying loudly for his parents meanwhile the boy is rescued by a man who lifts him in his arms and tries to console and pacify the child by offering him sweets and toys from the same shops he had passed through when he was with his parents but the little boy keeps on crying and sobbing hard for his parents now the little boy is not interested in anything he just wants to get united with his parents this shows that the little boy is very sentimental and emotionally attached to his parents though he loves materialistic things like toys and sweets the writer has tried to tell us that a child's most precious treasure are his parents second characters the parents the parents of the little boy are simple village folk who had come to enjoy a spring fair organized in the their village with their small child however they were too strict for their child as to not buy him anything from the fair they were a little miserly too next characters the man person who finds the boy the man or the person who hears the sound of the crying child amid this a huge crowd in the fair is a very kind man he lifts the little boy in his arms and asks him about his parents the man is loving and caring too as he offers to buy the child sweets or toys in order to pacify and console him because the ch- lost child was very upset and crying bitterly for his parents 
let us start the chapter the lost child a child goes to a fair with his parents he is happy and excited and wants the sweets and toys displayed there but his parents don't buy them for him the boy is happy and gay he sees the colorful toys and wants to buy them but his father deny to buy thing for him why then does he refuse when someone else offers them to him it might probably because his parents have warned him against accepting things from strangers most importantly it would be because he just wants to get united with his parents and he loves more his parents than anything it was a festival of spring from the wintry shades of narrow lanes and alleys emerged a gaily clad humanity some walked some rode on horses others sat being carried in bamboo and bullock carts one little boy ran between his father's legs brimming over with life and laughter meaning of difficult words alleys means narrow passage clad dressed brimming full of it was time for the spring festival all sorts of people dressed in colorful clothes came out of the lanes and were seen heading towards the fair some were walking some rode on horses and some were being carried in bamboo and bullock carts one little boy ran between his father's legs he was laughing away with excitement and happiness come child come called his parents as he lagged behind fascinated by the toys in the shops that lined the way he hurried towards his parents his feet obedient to their call his eyes still lingering on the receding toys as he came to where they had stopped to wait for him he could not suppress the desire of his heart even though he well knew the old cold stare of refusal in their eyes i want that toy he pleaded lagged means to remain behind fascinated to feel attracted lingering remaining behind receding slowly disappearing surprise to hold back feelings stare gaze yes students when the child seemed to lag behind the parents would beckon to him to walk alongside the boy saw the toys lined up in the shops and he was attracted towards it and that would slow down his walk his eyes were glued to the toys but he had to obey his parents as he moved towards his parents who were waiting for him to pull up with them he could not resist asking them to buy him a toy even though he knew very well that his parents would only stare at him and not buy him anything his father looked at him red eyed in his familiar tyrant's way his mother melted by the free spirit of the day was tender and giving him her finger to hold said look child what is before you it was a flowering mustard field pale like melting gold as it swept across miles and miles of even land a group of dragon flies were bustling about on their gaudy purple wings intercepting the flight 
of the lone black bee or butterfly in search of sweetness from the flowers the child followed them in the air with his gaze till one of them would still its wings and rest and he would try to catch it but it would go fluttering flapping up into the air when he had almost caught it in his hands then his mother gave a cautionary call come child come come on the footpath see <coughs> tyrants means like a cruel man melted is soft attitude tender soft dragon flies a kind of flying insect intercepting means trying to block someone's path still not moving intercepting trying to block someone's path fluttering moving to fly off flapping moving its wings cautionary alerting footpath narrow path along a road for walking listen the boy's father looked angrily at him but the mother was not too hard on him she was somewhat soft and tried to divert his attention by pointing towards the mustard fields in front of them the fields looked like melting gold and spread out for miles and miles one could see dragon flies with their purple wings and the black bee or butterfly in search of pollen from the flowers the child started looking at these flying insects in the air he saw that some of them would suddenly stop flapping their wings and sit down to rest the child would then try to go near the insect to catch it and just when he thought he had almost reached it it would flutter its wings and fly off in doing so he would step out into the field and the mother would then call out to come and join them on the pavement he ran towards his parents gaily and walked abreast of them for a while being however soon left behind attracted by the little insects and worms along the footpath that were teeming out from their hiding places to enjoy the sunshine come child come his parents called from the shades of grove where they had seated themselves on the edge of a well he ran towards them a shower of young flowers fell upon the child as he entered the grove and forgetting his parents he began to gather the raining petals in his hands but lo he heard the cooing of doves and ran towards his parents shouting the dove the dove the raining petals dropped from his forgotten hands come child come they called to the child who had now running in wild capers round the banyan tree and gathering him up they took the narrow winding footpath which led to the fair through the mustard fields see a breast means alongside teeming full of grove group of trees going the song of the doves wild capers
means in wild playful movements winding a zigzag way as soon as the boy's mother called out he like an obedient child ran happily and walked with her for some time and then soon got left behind as he got attracted towards different insects and worms that that came out of their hiding places to enjoy the sunshine again finding him left behind the parents now sat on the edge of a well under the shade of some trees and called out to him the child again ran towards them as he went close to them a shower of flowers fell upon him from a grove he now got attracted towards the flowers which were falling like rain and started gathering the petals so engrossed was he that he forgot about his parents just then he heard the cooing of doves and he ran towards his parents and the petals fell from his hands the parents beckoned him again this time the child started running wildly around the banyan tree the parents now picked him up and took the narrow winding path which led to the fair through the mustard field as they neared the village the child could see many other footpaths full of throngs converging to the whirlpool of the fair and felt at once repelled and fascinated by the confusion of the world he was entering throngs means crowds converging meeting at a point whirlpool a circular movement as they came closer to the village the child saw many other paths all full of people converging towards the fair the child felt confused when he saw so many people he somehow did not seem to enjoy this scene but he was fascinated to see a new kind of world a sweet meat seller hawked gulab jamun rasgulla barfi jalebi at the corner of the entrance and a crowd pressed round his counter at the foot of an architecture of many colored sweets decorated with leaves of silver and gold the child stared open eyed and his mouth watered for the barfi that was his favorite sweet i want that barfi he slowly murmured but he half but he half knew as he begged that his plea would not be heeded because his parents would say he was greedy so without waiting for an answer he moved on repelled means drove away sweet meat sweets hawked shouted murmured spoke softly plea p l e a plea request he did paid attention to at the corner of the entrance he saw a sweet meat shop selling gulab jamun rasgulla barfi and jalebi a big crowd of people gathered around the counter the shopkeeper had decorated his sweets on leaves of gold and silvers the child saw this and he was tempted to eat barfi that was his favorite sweet he slowly murmured that he wanted barfi but then he knew his parents would not buy it and tell him that he was being greedy so he walked on A flower seller 
fogged a garland of gulmohar a garland of gulmohar the child seem irresistibly drawn he want towards the basket where the flowers lay heaped and half murmured i want that garland but he well knew his parents would refuse to buy him those flowers because they would say that they were cheap so without waiting for an answer he moved on irresistibly means strong attraction heaped means piled as they moved on the boy heard a flower seller trying to sell garlands of gulmohar the child felt attracted by the flowers and went towards the basket where the seller had capped a heap of flowers now the child again murmured that he wanted the garland once again he knew his wish would not be fulfilled because his parents would not buy him the flowers saying they were cheap again without waiting for an answer from his parents he walked on a man stood holding a pole with yellow red green and purple balloons flying from it the child was simply carried away by the rainbow glory of their silken colors and he was filled with an overwhelming desire to possess them all but he well knew his parents would never buy him the balloons because they would say he was too old to play with such toys so he walked on further carried away means impressed overwhelming means greatly listen now he saw a man standing with a pole on which hung all kinds of balloons in different colors flying in the air the child was attracted towards the colorful balloons and felt a strong desire to buy them all once again he knew he could not get them because his parents would not buy him saying he was too old to play with such toys a snake charmer stood playing a flute to a snake which coiled itself in a basket its head raised in a graceful bend like the neck of swan while the music stole in to its invisible ears like the gentle rippling of an invisible waterfall the child went towards the snake charmer but knowing his parents had forbidden him to hear such coarse music as the snake charmer played the proceeded further coiled means in a curved shape rippling like the fall of water invisible which cannot be seen coarse vulgar unpleasant he walked on further and a little ahead he saw a snake charmer who was playing his flute to a snake sitting coiled up in a basket its head was raised like a snake of swan as though it were enjoying the music which fell on its invisible ears the child walked towards the snake charmer but then he felt his parents would forbid him from hearing such coarse music and so he walked on there was a roundabout in full swing men women and children carried away in a whirling motion shrieked and cried with dizzy laughter the child watched them intently and then he made a bold request i want to go on the roundabout please father mother roundabout means merry go round 
shrieked cried loudly dizzy confused intently very keenly as he walked further the child saw a round a boat going round in full swing there were men women and children sitting on it and were going round in a whirling motion they were all shrieking and crying aloud in a kind of dizzy laughter the child stood and watched them keenly interestedly and then he made a loud request that he wanted to go on the swing there was no reply he turned to look at his parents they were not there ahead of him he turned to look on either side they were not there he looked behind there was no sign of them the child but to his surprise he got no reply he turned to look at his parents but he could not see them he looked in all directions but still could not see them a full deep cry rose within his dry throat and with a sudden jerk of his body he ran from where he stood crying in real fear mother father tears rolled down from his eyes hot and fierce his flushed face was convulsed with fear panic stricken he ran to one side first then to the other hither and thither in all directions knowing not where to go mother father he wailed his yellow turban came untied and his clothes became muddy wailed cried loudly flushed red in excitement fears very strong convulsed violent and sudden movements listen then suddenly he ran from the spot crying in fear as he ran shouting out for his parents he got worried and started crying tears rolled down from his eyes his face was hot and flushed due to fear he began to panic and ran first in one direction and then and then in another not knowing where to go he yelled out loudly for his father and mother his yellow turban came off and his clothes became muddy having run to and fro in a race of running for a while he stood defeated his cries surpressed into sobs at little distances on the green grass he could see through his firmly eyes men and women talking he tried to look intently among the patches of bright yellow clothes but there was no sign of his father and mother among these people who seemed to laugh and talk just for the sake of laugh, laughing and talking he ran in all direction like a mad person till the fell till he felt defeated his loud cries now changed into soft sobs at a little distance he could see men and women talking he tried spotting his parents in the crowd but he could not all that he could see were people laughing and talking simply for the sake of talking he ran quickly again this time to a shrine to which people seemed to be crowding every little inch of space here was congested with men but he ran through people slag his little sob lingering mother father near the entrance to the temple however the crowd we came very thick men jostled each other heavy men 
with flashing murderous eyes and hefty shoulders the poor child struggled to thrust a way between their feet but knocked to end fro by their br- brutal movements he might have been trampled under foot had he no- not shrieked at the highest pitch of his voice father mother a man in the surging crowd heard his cry and stopping with great difficulty lifted him up in his arms he now moved towards a shrine where people seemed to be gathering since it was a very crowded place he had to struggle through the legs of the people still sobbing away he kept calling out of his father and mother near the entrance of temple it became very crowded people were jostling and pushing each other to get in front the child wanted to make way between their legs but was knocked to and fro by their harsh movements he was on the verge of being trampled under their feet had he not shouted out for his father and mother at the top of his voice a man heard his cry and turned towards him he bent down and lifted him up in his arms how did you get here child whose baby are you the man asked as he steered clear of the mass the child wept more bitterly than ever now and only cried i want i want my mother i want my father the man who picked up the boy asked him how he got there and whose child he was he took him out from the crowd into the open space the child cried even more bitterly and kept saying he wanted his mother and father the man tried to soothe him by taking by taking him to the rounder boat will you have a ride on the horse he gently asked as he approached the ring the child's throat tore into a thousand shrill sobs and he only shouted i want my mother father the man tried to calm him down by distracting him he took him to the rounder boat and asked if he would take a ride the children cried out even loudly and repeated that he wanted his mother and father the man headed towards the place where the snake charmer still played on the flute to the swing cobra listen to that nice music child he pleaded but the child shut his ears with his fingers and shouted his double pitched strain i want my mother i want my father the man then took him to the snake charmer and tried to draw his attention to the music from the flute but the child just shut his ears with his fingers and shouted for his father and mother the man took him near the balloons thinking the bright colors of the balloons would distract the child's attention and quieten him would you like a rainbow colored balloon he persuasively asked the child turned his eyes from the flying balloons and just sobbed i want my mother i want my father the man took him to the balloon man and again asked if he wanted the rainbow colored balloon the child sobbed and said he wanted his father and mother the man still trying to to make the child happy bore him to the to the gate where the flower seller said look can you smell those nice flowers child would you like a garland to put round your neck the child turned his nose away from the basket and retreated his sobs i want my mother i want my father now man 
मेड येट अनादर एफर्ट टू काम द चाइल्ड एंड टूक हिम टू द फ्लावर सेलर सिटिंग नियर द गेट एंड ड्रू हिज अटेंशन टू द नाइस स्मेल ऑफ द फ्लावर्स ही आस्कड इफ ही वॉन्टेड टू पुट अ गार्लैंड अराउंड हिज नैक द चाइल्ड टर्न हिज नोज अवे एंड रिपीटेड हिज चांट फॉर हिज पेरेंट्स thinking to a humor his disconsolate charged by a gift of sweets the man took him to the counter of the sweet shop what sweets would you like child he asked the child turned his face from the sweet shop and only sobbed i want my mother i want my father finally the man thought he could humor him by tempting him with sweets but to no avail the child simply said he wanted his father and mother students i hope you have understood the story very well try to find out the answers of questions thanks and have a nice day